GREX Construction Company Limited is a company that specializes in construction when it comes to giving excellent service to each of its clients it is well known and dependable we are a firm with over a decade of expertise in the field of construction innovation and building designs we have been granted permission to work across the Philippines when developing, innovating, and creating residential house designs. We believe in utilizing cutting-edge technology while maintaining a high level of safety. Building the future, restoring the past, you are in good hands because we find ways. Good evening ma'am, I'm Eric Amo from Jirex Construction. We received an email that you're looking for a construction company that will build your dream house, right? Yes, I was searching for a construction company so I'm in the area and you were the first to come out because of the service you provide to your clients. You got the highest rating as well based on the quality of construction of residential houses you built. That's why I chose your company. Thank you for choosing us. You can count on us that we will build your dream house strong and safe. But before that, Miss Montilla, I will set an online meeting with our architect and engineer so you can discuss the details of the project we're going to build. Yes, sure. Good evening, everyone. Good evening, Good evening sir. sir. Good evening, sir. So last week, we had an online meeting by our client, Ms. Montilla, with architect Atencio, engineer Mendoza, and engineer Vea. We've discussed the project detail, including the estimated cost of materials to be used. It is not yet included there the cost of labor since we are depending on the number of days when this project will end. So I summoned you guys to this meeting to hear your report regarding the preparation of materials and workforce to be involved in this project. I also want to hear the estimated days to finish each activity. So let's start with the contractor, Mr. Calata. Yes, sir. Right now, the wheelbarrow loader, backhoe loader, and bulldozer are already on standby for site clearing. We already hired plant operators. We also talked to the nearby houses so as not to have an issue when it comes to the property line, which is supported by Ms. Montilla's land title document. Based on the number of trees and amount of piles on the site, the site clearing will take two days to finish. How about the foundation, Mr. Mendoza? Mr. Calata and I discussed the foundation plan recently. I also gave him a copy of the blueprint of the structural plan, including the slab and tie beam schedule. Mr. Calata also hired skilled iron workers to do the formworks of beams, columns, wall footings, and column footings. The estimated days to complete this foundation is four days. What about the next activities, Mr. Calata? We have already hired subcontractors to manage each of the activities. Based on their estimation, the block laying will be completed within 10 days. It will take 6 days to complete the roofing, and as for plumbing, according to our hard plumber, it will take 4 days to finish. Thank you, Mr. Calata. So, the next activity after that is electrical work, right? Give me some details about it, Mr. Brea. We have recently discussed the electrical plan with Mr. Calata and his subcontractor, for the electrical work. I also did load computations for the power and lightning layout as well as the size of the riser to be used based on the details of the plan. 
I also gave them a copy of the plan to follow. It will take five days according to the electrician's projected completion time. For plastering. Uh, good morning, sir. I'm Mr. Merino, a subcontractor hired by Mr. Kalata to manage the plastering activity with my laborer. Uh, Mr. Kalata and I also work with architect Atencio to determine the thickness and scale of the plastered walls based on the project's interior design and elevation plans. After plastering the walls, we will apply a concrete neutralizer to remove acid from the walls so that when it is painted, it will not just peel off. Overall, it will take about seven days before it ends. Okay, for fixing doors and windows. Good evening, sir. I've already discussed with Mr. Kalata the plan for the schedule of doors and windows, including the types, number of locations, and dimensions. He already has a copy of the plan. Someone has also been hired to install it after plumbing and plastering. Good evening, sir. I'm Mr. Setenta, and I was hired for this project to install doors and windows with my late work. I checked the elevation plans of Architect Atencio recently. Based on the plan, my estimation is that the installation process will take approximately seven days to finish. For the ceiling, Mr. Bokbok is here to give a few details for the types of ceiling that will be used after the completion of block laying. Good evening, sir. I already seen Architect Atencio's plan for that ceiling. According to Mr. Kalata, Acoustic ceiling tiles are the type that the client wants to in install for the ceiling and it is very easy to find in some well-known hardware here in Montalban area. In my estimation, it will take about 7 days to complete the installation of the ceiling. Good evening, sir. In the remaining 5 activities, our hard labor is able to do it but still under the management of the contractor. Flooring will take 8 days to complete and the start date it depend, is dependent on the result of re electrical and ceiling work. The interior fixture and ex are expected to take 4 days to complete, while exterior, exterior fixture will take 5 days. And, will this, the, and this will begin after the flooring work is completed. Painting work can only begin after the doors and windows are installed and it will take approximately 2 days to complete. In landscaping, we already have workforce for this and we, we will wait for the interior and exterior fixture to finish before it starts. Okay. So, um, based on my calculations, we have approximately 44 days to complete this project. Depending on the work though, the total estimated days might be reduced or increased. If so, I will have GREX staff process the construction project document that will be signed by Ms. Matilia. A successful online meeting for GREX Construction Company Limited and its important personnel were executed. Mr. Balmas, the project manager of this project, was able to know all the estimated days that will be needed in each activity all the materials and workforce that will be involved for the construction of Miss Montilla's house have been prepared. To comprehend the critical path methods used in this sort of project, first, learn what it is, how it is designed, who among the staff makes this technique, and why it is vital. What is the critical path method in construction? The critical path method in construction is a form of project scheduling that uses a diagram to determine the time required to accomplish each activity. The critical path method, or CPM for short, is also known as critical path scheduling. Project managers mostly use it to successfully plan building projects. What is a critical path diagram? A critical path diagram is a visual planning tool that shows all of the construction operations that must be completed to finish a project. The diagram considers the duration of each activity, the preceding activity, or how one activity is connected to another, and the lag. 
The diagram enables for the visual breakdown of the project into tasks, which are commonly portrayed in boxes. How do you identify a critical path? A detailed network diagram that takes into consideration each activity, its length, predecessors, and latency determine the critical path. A critical path is the sequence of activities that must be completed in order for the project to be completed. Using the critical path method to map out each project's activity, predecessor, and lag, project managers may compute the entire project duration. The CPM is then used to determine the important activities required to execute the proposed project. A critical path diagram also includes non-critical tasks. These are operations that have more schedule flexibility and will have less influence on the project. How is the critical path method applied in the field of construction? Construction projects can be complex and time-consuming. CPM supports project managers in completing construction projects on schedule and within budget. Following the signing of a construction contract, project managers may utilize the CPM to successfully plan and prepare for the impending project. They may break down all the required tasks and slot them into the diagram. Link their interdependencies, estimate activity durations, and identify the key route to accomplish the project. Now that we've learned the principles of critical path method, we can begin creating the network diagram. But first, let's create the project's activity schedule. Here are the following procedures that should be followed in performing critical path method networking. Construct a project network. Perform forward and backward passes. Determine project completion time. Calculate slack values. And state the critical path. We will use this node convention where A is what activity is being described and T is for the estimated activity duration. ES is the earliest time can start. EF is the earliest finish time. LS is the latest start time. And LF is the latest finish time without exceeding the project's time complexity. Now that we have the project's activity schedule and convention node, let's first make a simple sketch of the project network so that we can visualize the diagram of the full network in the next procedure. Activity A has no predecessor, so it can begin at start. Activity B needs A to be completed before it can start. Activity C depends on B. Both activity D, E, and I need C to be completed before it can start. Activity F needs E. G needs D. H needs both E and G completed. J needs both F and I completed. K needs J. L needs J. M depends on H. N needs both K and L completed. Since M and N have no successors, they go to finish. Here is the network with activity nodes showing the letters and time. Let's start doing the forward pass. A has no predecessor, so its earliest start time is will be 0. Since it has 2 days to be completed, its earliest finish time will be 0 plus 2, which gives 2. Now, B needs A to be completed before it can start. Since the earliest finish time for A is 2, and the earliest time B can start is 2. And with an activity time of 4 days, B will have an earliest finish time of 4 plus 2, 
which gives 6. C needs B to be completed before it can start. Since the earliest finish time for B is 6, then the earliest time C can start is 6. And with an activity time of 10 days, C will have an earliest finish time of 10 plus 6, which gives 16. D needs C to be completed before it can start. Since the earliest finish time for C is 16, then the earliest time D can start is 16. And with an activity time of 6 days, D will have an earliest finish time of 6 plus 16, which gives 22. E needs C to be completed before it can start. Since the earliest finish time for C is 16, then the earliest time E can start is 16. And with an activity time of 4 days, E will have an earliest finish time of 4 plus 16 which gives 20. F needs E to be completed before it can start. Since the earliest finish time for E is 20, then the earliest time F can start is 20. And with an activity time of 5 days, F will have an earliest finish time of 5 plus 20, which gives 25. G needs D to be completed before it can start. Since the earliest finish time for D is 22, then the earliest time G can start is 22. And with an activity time of 7 days, G will have an earliest finish time of 7 plus 22, which gives 29. H on the other hand, needs E and G to finish before it can start. Since the earliest finish time for E and G are 20 and 29 respectively, and H needs both of them to finish in order to start, then the earliest time H can start is 29. In other words, the highest of the earliest finish times preceding an activity will the activity's earliest start time. So H finishes at 9 plus 29, which gives 38. I here has only one predecessor, which is C, that has 16 or earliest finish time. Then the earliest start time of I will be 16. With an activity time of 7 days, I will have an earliest finish time of 7 plus 16, which gives 23. J has predecessors F and I. Since the highest earliest finish time is 25, J can start earliest at 25 and finish at 33. K here has only one predecessor, which is J. The earliest finish time of J is 33, and that will be the earliest start time of K and finish at 37. L here has only one predecessor, which is J. Since the earliest finish time of J is 33, that will be the earliest start time of L and finish at 38. M here has only one predecessor, which is H. Since the earliest finish time of H is 38, that will be the earliest start time of M and finish at 40. N, on the other hand, needs 
K and L to finish before it can start. Since the highest earliest finish time from K and L is 38, then the earliest time N can start is 38. So N finishes at 44. As you can see here, N has the highest earliest finish time. So we can say that the project's completion time is 44 days. But remember, in case the second to last letter has a higher earliest finish time than the last letter, that would be the project's completion time. In other words, the project's completion time is the highest of earliest finish times at the finish node. Now, let's do the backward pass. Since the project's completion time is 44 days, the latest finish times for the activities at the finish node, M and N, has to be 44. That is, M and N cannot be completed in longer than 44 days. Next, we will determine the latest start times by subtracting the activity times from the latest finish times. For N, the latest start time will be 44 minus 6 to give 38. For M, the latest start time will be 44 minus 2 and that gives 42. Now, L has only one successor which is N that has latest start time of 38 minus 5 that gives 33. K here has only one successor which is N that has latest start time of 38 minus 4 that gives 34. Now, J has two successors, K and L. Their latest start times are 34 and 33 respectively. As a result, the latest time J has to finish has to be 33 in order for L to start. In other words, when doing backward pass, the latest finish time of an activity must be the minimum of the latest start times of its successors. So, so the latest start time of J will be 33 minus 8 which gives 25. I here has only one successor which is J that has latest time of 25 minus 7 which gives 18. H here has only one successor which is M that has latest start time of 42 minus 9 which gives 33. G here has only one successor which is H that has latest start time of 33 minus 7 which gives 26. F here has only one successor which is J that has latest start time of 25 minus 5 which gives 20. E has two successors F and H. The minimum of their latest start times is 20. So the latest finish for E will be 20 and its latest start will be 16. 
E here has only one successor, which is G, that has latest start time of 26 minus 6, which gives 20. C here has three successors, D, E, and I. The minimum of their latest start times is 16. So the latest finish for C will be 16, and its latest start will be 6. Now, B here has only one successor, which is C, that has latest start time of 6 minus 4, which gives 2. Activity A has one successor, which is B, with latest start of 2, so the latest finish for A will be 2, and its latest start will be 0. We are done now with backward pass. The slack or an activity is defined as the amount of time an activity can be delayed without extending or increasing the project completion schedule and it is computed as latest start minus earliest start or latest finish minus earliest finish so the slack for a will be 0 minus 0 or 2 minus 2 which will be 0 the slack for B will then be 0. For C, it will be 0. For D, 4. For E, 0. For F, 0. For G, 4. For H, 4. For I, For J, 0. For K, 1. For L, 0. For M, 4. And for M, 0. Remember, for example, that activity D can begin any time between day 16 and 20. And it can finish any time between day 22 and 26. However, D can be delayed up to 16 days and the project will still be completed in day 44. Activities A, B, C, E, F, J, L, and N, on the other hand, cannot be delayed at all without extending the project's completion time. So for example, if J is delayed by 5 days, then the project's completion time will be extended by 7 days as well, from 44 to 49. The activities with zero slack are called critical activity, and they form the critical path which is longest path in the network. So, the critical path here is A, B, C, E, F, J, L, and N. And that's how to construct a critical path method network diagram. Three, two, one, action! Please, our heart, our hydro labor, <laughs> labor is able to. Wait, 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 wait.
Tamo dado. 